Shalom and welcome. My name is Minister Robert Lee Williams from Prophetic Information Ministries, where we blow the trumpet, the shofar, around the world, informing you of prophetic news and bringing God's miracle ministry to the world. Well, today is September the 14th, 2016. And I'm going to be doing a series of teachings on faith, Great faith and supernatural faith. And I want to tell you why I'm doing this. It's something that God has put on my heart oh, about a month and a half ago. And why? It's because of what is happening in the world today and what is about ready to happen. There are many prophetic events going on in this world. As you can see, the world is just falling apart out there. You know, you got your homosexuals, you know, they're 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 running rapid. Uh, you've got chaos in the Middle East. The Syrian Muslims are going all over the world bringing a lot of chaos out there. They're coming to America. In America, you're going to get the same chaos that Europe is getting. Judgment of God is coming down. But, you know, Satan is really mad at the Christians and the Jews. and He's going to, you can see that he's coming after us. And, but it's very important that you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in God, the creator of all of heaven and earth, creator of the whole universe. You must have faith in him and his word, the word of God. And, and I want to encourage you to listen to this teaching and do research on it yourself. And, and ask God to increase your faith. Do it every day. Ask God. You go into prayer and ask God to increase your faith. Because it's very important right now. You know, I heard today uh, that the Syrian army is putting up troops on the Golan Heights right now against Israel. Because what's going on over there? You know, the Ezekiel 38-39 war is about ready to happen, it looks like. You know, we just got to hopefully pray that off, but that God's will be done. But I want to make sure you are prepared when it's your turn to stand before God. And you must have faith right now, not tomorrow, not next week. Don't put this off. You have to have faith in God and you have to increase your faith. So I'm going to go into this teaching and I hope it's going to bless you tremendously. And uh, I want you to get a notepad and uh, maybe a Bible so you can read the scriptures later. But get a notepad and write these scriptures down when I mention these scriptures and study those. Okay, we're now going to go into uh, the teaching right now. And how do you build real faith? Faith in God is listed as one of the fundamental teachings of Scripture. Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. In fact, Christians are told that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Look up Hebrews eleven six. In fact, Christians, okay, eleven six. However, Jesus Christ looked ahead to the end of this present age, our time today, raised a sobering question to his disciples. He asked, 
when the Son of Man comes, we will find faith on the earth. Will he find faith on the earth? Luke 18, 8. Since the Bible records the question, it might be good for each of us to consider how it applies to our own personal situation. As we will see, the scriptures indicate that real faith will be in short supply as we approach the end of the age. The parable of the ten virgins reveal that five were unprepared for Christ's return because they lacked certain qualities. Read in Matthew 25, 1-13. They were not invited into the kingdom of God as a result, and they messed out on the incredible reward. Well, I don't want to see you be unprepared. I want you, and I want myself, to enter into the kingdom of God. That's why I am giving this teaching for you, and I hope it does a good blessing for you. Let's continue. Building real faith. The challenge facing each of us as Christians is how do we build real faith? What is involved? This is nothing new and it's not limited to our present age. Even in the first century as Christ was beginning his church, the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. Read in Luke 17, 5. They knew they needed more faith, and they asked for guidance. That's what we need to do. Peter later writes that we might have diligent efforts to increase and add to our faith. Read 2 Peter 11, 5 through 11. But what must we do? Consider the following steps. 1. Ask God for more faith. Jesus instructed his disciples to ask and to knock. Read Matthew 7, 7 through 12. James offered the same advice. Read in James 1, 5. This is why the disciples asked Jesus to increase their faith. We can do the same. Pray earnestly about this. Number two, prove what you believe. Follow Paul's admonition. Read in 1 Thessalonians 5.21 and prove that God exists, that the Bible is his in uninspired word. Where the true church is and who are God's true ministers. Prove what the Bible actually says and hold fast to what you prove to be the truth. Number three, study what the Bible reveals about faith. Read and meditate on these examples of faith described in a mat in Hebrews chapter 11. Read the original accounts in the Old Testament. Determine what lessons you can draw from these accounts. Learn and grow. Number four, stir up God's Spirit. Faith is a gift of the Holy Spirit. God gives his spirit to those who repent and obey him. Pray, study, meditate, and fast regularly. Nourish and the use God's spirit, doubts will disappear and our faith will grow. Amen. Read in Timothy 1, 6-7. Number five, live by faith.
Put into practice what you read in the scriptures. Trust God that his word and trust God and his word. If the Bible says it, then do it. Don't argue with the scriptures. The American writer Ralph Waldo Emerson stated, We live by faith, or we do not live at all. Either we venture or we vegetate. If we vegetate, if we venture, we do so by faith, simply because we cannot know the end of everything at its beginning. We risk marriage or we stay single. We prepare for the profession by faith or we give up before we start. By faith we have by faith, we move mountains of oppositions, or we are stopped by a molehill. Number six, endure trials that will arise as you strive to live by every word of God. Enduring and overcoming the trials will help you build both faith and patience. Read in James 1, 2 through 4. It has been said, if we desire to increase faith, we must consent to its testings. Remember that God has promised to get us through the trials. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And the trials he allows are for our ultimate good, Romans 8, 28, number 7. Don't compromise or deny the true faith. Let me read that again. Don't compromise or deny the true faith. The Bible warns repeatedly about false teachers who will undermine and overthrow the faith of others by promoting misleading doctrines and ideas. We are also told many will depart or disregard true faith. However, the scriptures clearly state there is one faith and one body, the church, and it is the job of the ministry to promote the unity of the faith. Read in Ephesians 4 through 4 through 6 and 12 through 13. The role of the church is to maintain true doctrine. 1 Timothy 3 15 through 16. Also see Acts 15. This is why it is so important to know where God's true church is today and what the Bible actually says. The scriptures are not to be interpreted as each individual sees fit in his, his or her own mind. 2 Peter 1.20 these only lead to confusion, which damages and destroys faith. As we approach the end of the age and Satan increases his attacks on true believers, we will have to contend earnestly for the truth which was once and for all delivered to the saints. Jude 3. Faith is important to God. Faithlessness is important to our faithfulness is important to our physical life as it is for our eternal life. 
As the Apostle Paul saw at the end of his life approaching, he concluded, I have found the good fight. I have fought the good fight, and I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Read in 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. He knew his faith. He knew he had faith and total confidence. His reward was waiting him. The God of the universe has big things in store for all of mankind, especially for those he, call, he is calling to be his first fruit. Those who learn now and to trust him, let's make a diligent effort to grow in faith. Let's hold on faithful to the true church, to the true God has revealed to his church. Let's strive to build an atmosphere of faith in the living church of God. So when Jesus Christ returns, he will find real faith in those he has called. Praise God. I hope this teaching has spoken to you. And I would encourage you to listen to this teaching over and over again. That will help you increase your faith. You'll learn more each and every time you hear this video. Please tell your friends, your family, your children about this teaching. And uh, it'll increase their faith. You know, because I need my faith to increase too. That's, you know, God didn't give me this teaching just to give the teaching. He wants my faith to grow. I've had dreams and, and about increasing my faith and how I would be walking in the supernatural faith of God. To do that, I have to start out with the fundamentals of how to grow my faith. And then I have to go into uh, higher faith from faith to, to supernatural faith. Is it easy? No. But we must do this right now. We don't have tomorrow. We don't have next week. We have to get on this right away. So please, ask God to increase your faith. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and close right now. And uh, I'm going to start my next teaching here shortly. But like I said, listen to this video over and over again. And pass it out through Facebook, through YouTube. Send it all over the world. Send it to churches. Send it to your friends. That their faith will grow also more in the Lord. And I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in today. My name is Minister Robert Lee Williams from Prophetic Information Ministries. Take care and God bless and I'll see you on the next video.